Welcome to Geek Buzz. I'm Nixie Pixel here to talk about nerdy stuff that tickles my neurotransmitters like plastic eating mushrooms and solar powered eye implants. I am Nixie of Borg. Resistance is futile. Brought to you by Click It or Ticket. We know that with recent innovations in technology that the deaf no longer have to live a muted life, cochlear implants have actually caused such amazing reactions like this one you've probably seen a million times. So now technically your device is on. <laughs> Can you tell? Oh, it's exciting! And scientists have been testing out similar implants on the blind with replacing the light sensing receptors on the retina with a digital implant, but there have been several challenges with it. There's just no power source that you can use. You can't have like a battery pack hooked up to your eyeballs. But I'm really excited to tell you that the geniuses at Stanford, of course, have created a sensor that powers itself, generates its own power from the sun. They're actually called photovoltaic pixels, and they absorb the infrared rays, and it's just kind of incredible when you think about it, because we created digital cameras based on the amazing complexity of the human eye, and now we are creating eyesight out of the complexity of cameras. The brand spanking new digital eye implant works by replacing the function of damaged retinal photoreceptor cells. Instead of rods and cones being stimulated by light, the implant uses a digital array to stimulate ganglion cells that transmit visual information to the brain. Now, no humans yet, but the device has already been tested in rats, and we'll call them mighty mice because they so generously donated their photoreceptors, which scientists destroyed, in order to try the implant, which they were able to see perfectly after the experiment. The only kind of real difficult thing to assess here is actually how good the eyesight is, because, you know, they can't really tap into the brain of a rat and see if they're actually seeing what they should be. So, I mean, ideally this would go to humans who are willing to, you know, undergo this experiment. In the meantime, and in a horrible segue to my next segment, we can take those mice that have been newfoundly gifted with sight to see the world's largest tower of Legos built by toddlers. Now I know this isn't even remotely as cool as having the blind be able to see, but it's Legos. We love Legos. We grew up with Legos. And can you imagine using 50,000 of those suckers by kids that are like this high to make a 104 foot tall structure? I mean, you really have to see it to believe it, so. Apparently so many kids wanted to do this in Korea that they had to have a lottery. So I guess when you won the lottery, it means that you get to work with 4,000 other kids building a giant ass structure and only be able to do it in five days. That sounds more nerve wracking to me. <laughs> And maybe I'm just really hard to please, but I was kind of hoping that this immense structure would be like how big the USS Enterprise is in my mind and boldly go where no baby has gone before. But hey, you know, nobody's perfect. <laughs> And since we're already talking about the interlocking bits of plastic that are Legos, we should touch base on the fact that in the Pacific, all of our accumulated plastic is amassing in a giant island that's twice the size of France. Though you probably already knew this too, because that very island, that plastic soup, is 100 million tons and stretches from Hawaii to Japan. At this point, cleaning it up isn't an option. It's just going to get bigger as our reliance on plastic continues. The long-term solution is to stop producing as much plastic products at home and change our consumption habits. 
Unless we could find some kind of magic mushroom that would literally consume the plastic for us. Heh, <laughs> magic mushrooms. That's right, we found a mushroom that will om nom nom our plastic bags so they don't end up in little turtle stomachs and make them bloated and die. And if we play our cards right and breed this fungus in the best way that we know how and put it in the right areas, not like dumping blue-green algae into the sea, we could get rid of that plastic soup situation in the Pacific without using $10 billion, which was suggested before we found these funguses. Fungi. Fungi. So my question for you this week is if you could invent something zany, what would it be? If, if all the impossible things were possible and you know what what disease or societal issue or crisis would you fix with this amazing invention i want to know what you guys think oh and i'll also be posting my favorite comments in next week's episode so until then be sure to give some llama love and subscribe and i'll talk nerdy to you later My dad used to tell me that the car wouldn't move or start unless everyone was wearing their seatbelts, which I soon found out was a blatant lie. But some truth is that motorists are 75% less likely to die in a rollover car crash if they're buckled up. Not to be a parent here, but you should buckle up every time you go out, day and night. It doesn't matter. Just pretend your car doesn't start without it. And if that doesn't convince you, know that law enforcement agencies are prepared to give you a ticket for anyone not buckled up. No excuses and no warnings. So click it or ticket, please. I mean, I want you to be around for my videos. <laughs>